Hey there, YouTube. How's it going? Uh, this is Sammy, and I'm going to try my hand at making some trance for the first time. I went to a Star Trance show last night at Organics, and uh, I was really I got a lot of inspiration in two of those shows, two of the sets that happened. Um, so I'm going to try my hand at it. It might not be Star Trance necessarily, but it'll be some kind of trance. Um, Fast-paced, thumping beat. And yeah, I'm going to do a whole bunch of uh, different input methods to put this track together, and I'm going to film all of it. And at some point, I'll release the the track as a standalone thing. Hopefully, what I have it by the end of the night. I don't really do too much by midway of mastering. For me, it's all about the live experience of making music and sound. That's that's what really excites me personally. So that's where I try to focus. Um, yeah, so my live sets, if you catch any of them, it's all live, looped, improvised. Uh, but I do also like to make tracks, though I do not DJ, at least not currently. I, I probably at some point will integrate that into my live sets, but uh, it's not currently on the horizon of something I'm ready to explore quite yet. So first off, uh, here I'll show you a little bit of what we're working with. I'm going to be doing all this stuff in Ableton Live for now, as in it will be in Ableton Live, not just for now. <laughs> That's the only... Uh, software that I've really gotten to know well for live music. Um, I've used things like Pro Tools and uh, Reaper in the past, but they that's not really so much what I want for a live music set. Um, and that, that's the aspect that I'm coming from. So here's what we have. We've got five different MIDI tracks that have uh, just different random instruments. And then I might, I'll switch. Th that's just my standard five that I start my sets with for the most part. Um, usually I have three uh, audio tracks that have drum loops that I that I trigger because I don't I haven't integrated live drumming into my uh, set quite yet. Um, but for this, I'm going to use a sequencer that will be battery sequenced, and some live drumming is going to be battery live. And for both of these things, I have a instance of battery three running in there, and I'll show you the interface of that in a bit. Actually, why don't, why don't we do that right away? I'll start. We'll start with a sequencer. I'm just. I'll put this down here for a sec while I go grab the sequencer and open that up. All right, so this is the interface here of battery three. It's got a 16 by 16, sorry, not 16 by 16. There's 16 different samples in there, but it's a four by four frame to get that. And each of those uh, make a different sound. The top four over here are, um, what's it called? Uh, different kind of hi-hats, those are the basses. Here are different random sounds, it's just sound cool. And here's a couple different kind of snare sounds and a crash. Um, here, why don't I actually, since that's the mode that I'm showing you guys. Here, so just remember that layout. Oops, it's not the right. That's a different layout over here. It's just a different set of, uh, so I showed you the sequenced ones there and then I tried to play it live, but it was just a different, uh, collection of samples. So I'll switch back to the same one, this one, just so you can see what it's like. French house, there we go. So these four will be basses now. These are going to be different random sounds. Here are going to be some, uh, hi-hats snares and or clap rather that one specifically here is a crash so those are the sounds that i'm going to use for the sequence drums which i'll switch to right now so now we're in sequencer mode so if, if i play this here you can see this very interact and so on and so forth. 
Um, let me see how loud this is playing. So, uh, I'm, re I'm recording this all into Audacity. As you can see, my voice is only on the left channel. Um, so here I have a I have a little audio mixer here, and the point on this mixer is so that I can have different sound inputs. Uh, I'm going to be integrating a couple hardware synths here, like the Monotron, and I have the Monotron Duo here somewhere as well, and a uh, guitar as well. Some at some point some drums that are be hooked up to an actual drum set. My voice, so I'm going to be playing with that soon into Ableton. Uh, I'm looping it with some effects and stuff like that, but um, so that's what's to come. But for now, I'm using purely software based instruments, um, such as this, and those are going um, in here via USB. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to go back into Ableton here and boost up the tempo because Psytrance should be faster than 94 BPM. 170. Okay, so I'm just going to layer some. What's it called? Here we're going to a different track. A little loud, eh? So we can. Here, I'm going to a little bit more so you can see more what I'm doing here. So you hear how this first one here is way softer than the rest of them? variation in the Okay, so here's another thing you can do with this. Uh, oh, by the way, the software that I'm running on the pad control is called, uh, it's from Native Control. It's called DPK for pad control dash uh, DSQ, I think, or digital sequencer. Is that what it is? Let me check real quick. Yeah, DSQ, yeah, digital sequencer. Um, yeah, so I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm copying this thing here into another bank. You get three banks for instruments, switching there. And then I'll go here and it's completely blank because I haven't copied anything into there. Well, that's some variation of... So there we go, those are the three things. Now it's going to play... There's four different bars I have here. And for each of them I can pick either one of those patterns, silence, so so that's going to be the hi-hat track that I'm going to use for this. Now let's get some snare. We hold the X button, we can change the actual sample that's being played. So I really like this, I want it to be louder though. Maybe it's a touch softer. Another cool thing about this thing, 
Eclat pad you can use to So, as you can see, the uh, just touching it makes it go every single one of those beats. And, uh, and then I can go down volume, and up in volume. Oh, the finger nose are long, so I try to play guitar. And so on and so forth. And I'm sure on some nice big subs that would sound amazing at the party. So it's a lot of, I wish, I wish I could control by going uh, with this direction, like tempo, like how often that would play, because that, that would love so much more uh, expression, much nicer expression for a live session. Um, now what I'm going to do, I think this bass could use a little bit more oof. I'm going to add one more thing here, but I'll switch a different kind of bass to add. click learn in here in the white, white clap cell, uh, it's just going to listen to the next two MIDI notes that hit, and that'll be the range that it learns, so, so now it's gone. And it's a little overpowered, I'm going to turn down the volume of this particular cell over here, so it's more subtle now, and I'm going to turn all the other stuff down. There, that's that's the sound I think that I'll go with for this track. So I'll leave this on here, just let it play as I record everything else. So this, this will be like when the the beat is at at its height. Um, and I'll record all the other sounds that I want. This is something that a lot of producers uh, I think talk about doing, and recommend doing, and I th I, it works for me personally very well. Just make it uh, make the like final drop, like just when everything's going together at its most intense first. Um, and then. Uh, figure out how to get there essentially and then for me usually that's just because of the way that I do things I just make like different loops that go together um, that involves uh, bringing all the different parts slowly uh, until it reaches kind of climax. I haven't really forward to playing too much with like I don't know little melodies and harmonies that kind of break from like 
maybe we'll try this time. Let's, let's see where this goes. Uh, so I'm gonna put this uh, down over here. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do, so I'll show you here. So this this here is a representation of. Once it's closing battery down. I can always click on that uh, question, the toolbar thing there to open it up again. Uh, what I'm going to do now is record a clip into here by clicking on there and just record the MIDI for this so that I can play even if uh, I close the digital sequencer. But I will come back to the digital sequencer at the end to. Uh, I hope I don't lose uh, the stuff I made, but we'll see. I might, I might do that so. Oh no. I'll just rebuild something similar later on if, uh, if need be. We will record this as some kind of drop in awesome. and It's very simple. This is the sequencer here. You can see I can mute it and all of a sudden you don't hear it anymore. Um, set to record. So, three, two, one. It's recording now. That's pretty cool. That's that's what you hear when you have this playing live and that playing together. So if I turn off the recordability, it goes back to what you just heard. That's some extra oomph it has it. Wow. Okay, so I'll, I'll layer two things together over uh, when I actually. Uh, Export this track. So that sounds way more powerful. And we'll be way more epic for a dance floor. Um, so there you go, guys. Double everything. If it's drums, then it'll be way more. Woo! And it sounded like the uh, what's it called? The hi hat. We're also moving more. Listen to that. Pretty cool. All right. Anyway, so I'm gonna close down the sequence for now. And I'm going to switch to a different software mode, also uh, put out by uh, by native uh, what's it called? native control. As, as you can see, it now says scale here. Here, I'll switch back to the sequence thing. It'll say oh no, nope. I thought it would say DSQ, but I guess it's CR1, which is track one. I'm guessing it's track two, three, four. You can see that change over there. Just in case I miss out. So here. Close to that point. Maybe whatever. Track one, two, three, four, five. Oh, 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 oh. There's a trick to you. That was gonna go more than that. Ha 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 ha. Um. Anyway, yeah. Going back to scale mode. In scale mode. What you can do? I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. See if I put this back on. Now there's no extra room because it's no longer inputting what affects it. In scale mode, this is a base here. I can turn this up. Yeah, I'll pick something more uh, listenable and doable. So that's a chromatic scale. That's, that's just like going from one of from what this note over here up to I don't know how far it goes. Probably up to like there. So, um, so. Yeah, scale is 12 notes. Or is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 notes before you hit the next note again. Um, so that's these four plus four more. So that's how far this goes. But the nice thing about this is you can change. Oops, so this is changing octave. Um, you can change keys as well. So now we're and this is much more apparent if you change scales. Let's go to the blues scale for example, which is something that I frequently use. Or we can go to C. But for side trance, I think I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just hold this down, 
go to some random scale. Oh, it's a major scale. Do play with that. Okay, well I said I'd go to some random scale, so it's major. So what I generally do is I just play with visual patterns. And eventually you find a pattern that works, or for me, at least I do, it's just... So I'm, I'm I'll just turn that down all the way because I think it's a little bit distracting. But that's, uh, that's what I'll be doing. I'll just have, I'll have the side trance going and I'll place um, the, the, the beat at least over it. And I'll try to find something that's, that works well. Um, and I'll try a whole bunch of different instruments, and you'll get to see me layering them. I'm going to put the, the what's it called? I'm going to take off my sweater first, one sec. I'll put this up here. Okay, well I'm just going to find a hair tie one sec. I know it'll get annoying if I don't get it off my head somehow. All right. Excuse me. All right. So uh, I'm put this beside the the, the trans part back up. I'm not sure if I want it this fast. I'm feeling I'm feeling this more. This kind of speed. Yeah, I really, I really dig this.
Hey, I just realized that I was talking into the mic, and therefore you guys probably couldn't hear me. Let's go again. Round number two. Yeah. Um, I really like that. That was a lot of fun. Um, it sounded way better than I expected it to. Um, so thank you, Chance, for bringing me to the major scale. That was, that was fun. Um, I'm going to record a long clip of me doing something like that, where it's going to be essentially uh, long enough that when it loops, it feels like it's all just random. And there's not much... Uh, not much repetitiveness, except for the style, um, of the move, but not necessarily, like, it's, it's going to be different patterns throughout the time, hopefully, um, like you saw how I changed up some of the, like, I first it was just, like, three in a row, and then it's, like, one hand doing two notes, and, and one hand doing three notes in a phone, and, like, a kind of swing, like, it might just be a pendulum swing, you know, it's like a way of thinking about it, uh, and then, of course, at times, I screwed up, but, uh, one thing I've learned, uh, for the past three or four months of trying to do that stuff. But when you screw up, you're not actually screwing up, you're just it's time for the thing to change and it can just go with whatever you screw up with. Um, it usually works out really well. And it's stuff that you couldn't have made otherwise. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's one advice. If, you, if you're doing a live thing and you're screwing up, don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just go with whatever you messed up with. Back to music Oh uh, yeah, so gonna record a long clip of this now. And uh, let it just keep looping. And then we'll add a bass after that. And I'm just turning down the uh, the uh, the sound of this mic so that you don't hear all the all that stuff because the mic is pretty close to it.
here. Let's see what this is. It's a really short loop is happening right now. So that's what that is. Let's see what this is. That's an even shorter loop. It's only uh, one bar long, and there's nothing in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to move this top one up to the very top so that there's some notion of separation in there. mistake um if i hadn't stopped i like the mistake sound at the beginning actually but if i'd listened to my the advice that i gave you and i hadn't stopped that would have made for a cool little stutter effect type thing um but oh well let's see this is only one option So I believe that the, is this it? Let's see. Oh, I just.
probably only hear this if you have a subwoofer. I guess you could have a laptop if you just don't want or whatever it is. Uh, I don't think the uh, regular computer is going to I'm going to start it out with this one like this. Okay, and then we'll have here as well. I had a minute record on, so it was recording that stuff into it. I don't want that to happen. So let me. Okay, let's see how this sounds now. If I just play this. Oops. That's the nice thing about working with software that if you screw up like that, you can still undo it, which is a really nice plus. Three, two, three, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, it sounds together. So now I'm gonna pause. So I've muted that. So now I only have the original bump, 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 bump track. Despite it being muted, I can still do the that thing. Okay, now I'm gonna get just a simple. Turn it down a little bit. Make that one louder. Just slightly so. so slightly softer. And switch the notes. I'm gonna go with the subtle one. And eventually it'll drop into the... Let's turn that off in case I do it again. And then I'll save the snare for when it drops. I won't have any snare otherwise. Or actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do with one, just a single snare. alternate so I'll have here I'll have the same note but I'll have it go on a different volumes and I'll switch between them Alright, 
so um all right i'm just gonna wing it i'm gonna start with this here we'll just stop everything for a second i'm gonna hit record so all everything i do in ableton now will be recorded into ableton and this is separate from the audio stream going into uh, out of my uh, audio interface and into my computer which is where I'm recording every all my voice and er everything that's coming out of here. Um, so, but I'm going to capture all the MIDI stuff because everything is being triggered by MIDI here. There are samples in the drums, but it's MIDI's that are tri triggering the audio samples themselves, and everything else is uh, synthesized digitally in, in the computer. Um, so it can be saved all as MIDI and then exported later, and I'll do that to have a polished, finished track. I might, I might do a little bit of mastering. We'll see. Depends on... Uh, how how it sounds on headphones, I guess. If there's anything that's uh, like really jarring or annoying or could use more oomph that's really obvious to me, I'll take care of it. Otherwise, it'll just be as is. Because as I said before, I don't like to spend too much time on that stuff because I'd rather move on to the next project. Um, and here we go. Here we go. Woo! And I'm going to turn down the the mic volume again. I just realized I forgot to turn it up again. That's okay. I'll turn it back down. Turn it off.
would just just And I'm going to turn this on more so you can see what I'm doing here with the faders just in case it was too uh, dark earlier. <laughs> 